Hey everyone, welcome to a very, very quick little exploration, not exactly tutorial of um, Friends of Motion. And it's all inspired by this Apple event logo that I've seen that was on this beautiful loop during the event. And as we know, Apple always had these amazing logo animations and I wanted to see if I can recreate it. So unfortunately, I don't know who made this. So if you know who made this, please leave a comment so we can all give credit where credit's due. And if you are the person who made this, I would love to know how you made it and if I am even close to the solution. So let's scrub through. And by the way, scrubbing through other people's work is my favorite thing to do. And I love it because I love to just to go frame by frame and try to analyze, uh, you know, the magic. So by scrubbing through, we see the logo has this slowly uh, rotational counterclockwise move towards the camera. It zooms, it blurs out. It turns into this beautiful abstract volume of colors. And then after a few seconds, it goes clockwise and lands to the original state. So if you've seen the event, there was also this kind of undulating colors inside as the loop was happening and as the audience was waiting for the event to start. And that was also very beautiful. So the way I built this is just very simple for Apple logos. And they're all just used by a sweep object to sweep a circle around them. I used a tiny circle, but then they're all different thicknesses. And then some of them, this one in the front, for example, has a little bit of a scale in detail. The scale details are slightly moved in a curve. So it looks like it's, I want it to feel like it's written on instead of just a solid neon light. And then the material on them is just a very simple emissive material. So you can create this by going to the plus sign, materials, incandescent, so it's luminant. And then to get that ramp, you're just going to click in this empty space, type ramp, and plug the ramp into the color of the illuminance, so the illumination color. And then you'll see that in the ramp, there's these presets. You can just load a preset or I've, you built your own. I've built one that's now matching the colors of the logo. And then what I did was I made about three different ramps. So one where the orange is in the middle, one where the orange is, uh, where is it? it? One there in the side. So just so that each one is a little different than the others. And if I click on Redshift, you'll see that there is, this is kind of how it looks. I also have a, oh, I forgot to mention, I also have a little animation that the, it, the Apple logo comes towards the camera and then it turns, makes a 360 and it lands back to its original position. And now how we're going to do this technique is using a camera lens effect. So I'm going to add a camera, just a standard redshift camera. I'm going to look through it and let's make sure we are exactly facing the, the, the Apple logo, because that's actually very important. It can't have an angle. So make sure your camera is, the coordinates are zeroed out on the rotation. And what I want to do is to make sure that my camera is focused on this master white. So if you look at the logo animation, there's this really sharp logo, Apple logo that is very in focus. And that is what I want the camera to focus on. So I'm going to go to the camera tab, optical, and then in the optical object, focus object space, I'm going to drag this master white logo to the object. So I want the camera to focus exactly on this master white logo. And you'll see that the camera jumped to this, the focus point jumped to this middle bit. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two is to change the aperture to 0 0.01, super tiny. And you'll see nothing will happen because this little checkbox that is so important needs to be checked, bokeh. Switch on the bokeh. And you will see if I now scrub, let's hope it works, to just a little further away, you'll see that we'll get this beautiful bokeh happening that kind of blurs everything and only the white logo is in focus. And the technique is as soon as it's on a slight angle, the it's almost like it's distort, distorting the lens. So it has this almost like a volumetric effect that it feels like it's a 
a donut almost. So this is the first level. The next thing is to change the bokeh. And this is almost like another magic button. And that's the spherical aberration, this one. And that you are, you'll see as soon as I bring it in, let me go a little forward on the angle. I'm going to change the spherical aberration to 100. And voila, isn't that just beautiful? I love it. It's almost like there is some kind of Fresnel on the, on the bokeh. That doesn't make sense, but you, you know what I'm saying. So this is sort of the basic idea of it. And I know it doesn't look like their logo animation. Let's go back to that animation. But I think it's pretty close. And I do think there was a lot of post-production done in this. I'm sure there was many cooks in this kitchen and I can see how they maybe have two different re renders on top of each other. Maybe it's, um, they got the Apple version and maybe the next one is just circles. And then I think here in the middle is where the post-production magic happened, where the one logo that animates in and that one that animates out maybe blended so you don't see a whole 360 flip. And maybe also some blurs and some, I don't know. There's definitely lots of secret sauce here in the middle. And I'm sure it took them months. <laughs> and for me, this is just a, a cheap and cheerful version of that logo animation. One thing that you can do is maybe just adding some uh, red uh, RS post effects. I typically do not like post effects. I always feel like it should be done in post. But um, I think for this little disco fun retro psychedelic project maybe um post effect is maybe the perfect time to use this yeah so that's it i also one thing let me just switch off the the, the post effect one thing that you will realize is it's very sensitive towards how far you are from the camera so i'll show you if i just move this thicker one a little closer you'll see that it starts blooming out and i do think maybe this was Maybe one of the things they used to create that inner side of the logo animation. Like there was definitely some volumetric colors in the middle of the Apple logo. So I think maybe it was a combination of maybe a, quite a few of them landing and maybe disappearing after a bit. Um, also, if you change the angle, as you've seen, it does make a big difference in shapes happening. So. You know, I think this is definitely where the fun is too, is to play around and find these little happy mistakes. So you just have to dabble. And I do feel the dabbling is where the magic is. So yeah, happy dabbling. All right, until next time.